So I'm going to give you a quick bike rundown on what I rode for the Tour Aotearoa. I've been asked by a number of people um, a few things about setup and about equipment and such. Um, everyone's got a different idea. This was my best shot at it thus far and uh, it's probably changed a little bit now but uh, let me show you what I got. So it was a pretty basic bike, came factory single speed, turned it into a, a 1x11. Um, and you don't need massively low gears for the TA. Um, aero bars, pretty common in Australasia. A lot of Europe still like that seem to be using them on their uh, ultras and their brevets and such, but uh, they're just brilliant. A um, bit of a rise kit makes a big difference for me. So profile do this nice little 70 mil rise kit, save me hunching over. Um, and I've got a lot of IT going on the handlebars here. Uh, Traditionally, I've used my cell phone as my main GPS, mostly because my eyes are rubbish. Uh, and it actually works really well, but it won't beep until you're you're off course, and there's a few other things it can't do. Um, at least it's right there for taking photos and things. Uh, running a Garmin or something similar uh, is, a, is a, really is the backup, and vice versa. And uh, computers, just if you ever are riding with a group of people and uh, there's any drafting going on or uh, you're reading the cue sheets, uh, actually having an idea of your speed and distance um, in, in real time that's easy to see is is uh, helpful. I love the Ergon grips because I get a lot of numb hands. Uh, I have trouble with that and it's just one small thing so it helps a wee bit and those are the cork ones. Obviously bar ends and such. Um, bags, pretty much standard setup you see everyone has these days. Uh, the tank bag I uh, replaced during TA as my cheap one failed. Uh, I do love the rear lake gear, it just goes and goes and goes. Uh, it's relatively simple. All of their products have evolved since I brought this kit and they got bigger and better. Uh, and the little feed bags um, that are stealth made for the TA uh, just gives you that extra space for all the things you forgot about. The other thing actually I've got from stealth, I've got a custom made down tube bag because I'm running the running a carbon fork. So I've got a very small triangle, only enough room for a couple of bottles. I wouldn't fit much in a frame bag. So uh, instead I got this uh, down tube bag made up and I can fit bottles in there, tent poles, or tools and food. It's just a bit of extra storage, it's otherwise wasted space. Um, I've got the extra large roll on the front, which uh, only works if you've got a rigid fork and even then I struggle. I invariably get it rubbing on the wheel from time to time and end up putting straps on it. It's just, it's a very big roll. Um, might be potentially a, a slightly smaller size would have been wiser. Um, I'll show you what I've got on here. So uh, if I start with the, the down tube bag, uh, this varies from time to time what I keep in here, but typically it's extra food. Stuff I need to want to be able to grab hold of quickly and refill my pockets. So I don't eat a lot of gels anymore, um, but I always keep a few emergency ones on. Uh, a lot of the time if you find yourself riding with someone who's a bit quicker than you, late in the evening, you just want to keep it going uh, that little bit longer. And uh, that might just get you to your busy spot for the night. So I keep a few of those. I try to stick with as much whole food as I can. Um, also in there, a bit of emergency toilet tickets in a plastic bag. Uh, that's important. <laughs> toilet paper doesn't last long on your bike if it's not in a bag. I can tell you that for an experience. Uh, and then the other thing I keep in here is kind of my tools, the body and um, the body and bike. So if I can open this up, there's a little El Cheapo uh, toilet bag. Uh, in the middle here, I've got the toothbrush, the spork, and a really nice light little Euro knife. Um, it's good and sharp. It's a good tool, and you can eat with it. So they're sitting there quite well. Uh, on one side I have the things for, for the body. So I've got a bit of I've got a bit of a hand sanitizer, some baby wipes, they have multiple uses they get on your chain too, cleaning glasses, uh, a little mini soap, and a bit of toothpaste in there. And on the other side we've got uh, the bike stuff, so my little park multi-tool, a uh, little extra squirt lube, 
carry a couple of those if it's a long ride. Uh, look, an extra strap, always carry an extra strap, and guarantee it'll be helpful on one of your rods. Um, a bag will come loose, you'll rip something, a strap will fail, you need to attach something to your back or your head or whatever. A little lightweight strap, I think these are X-Speed ones. Um, really helpful, use them all the time. Uh, spare set of watch batteries. Uh, plastic bags have a million uses. Um, your feet is quite a good one, so carry two. So if it all, all else fails, you can wear those over your socks, put your shoes back on, keep you warm. Uh, this little doofer is a little patch kit, and the cool thing about this, the amount of time, the amount of times I've lost my chain pins and bought chain pin after chain pin after chain pin, and this little sucker holds your chain pins as well as your patches. So I can actually find that replacement pin when I do snap my chain, instead of getting angry on the side of the road. And lastly, zip ties. Once again, multiple uses. You can do uh, everything with a zip tie. Um, so not, not, not stacks of tools, but that's what I need. Uh, the, probably one of the best tools I always keep on my bike is found right here. Duct tape. I wrap, uh, carefully wrap my top of my seat tube, seat post, in duct tape. You can get to it easy. Uh, if you rip a sidewall, you can wrap your tire. If your bag's chafing, you can protect that. Um, this is, once again, you can fix a multitude of uh, problems if you've got enough duct tape. And uh, I find that sitting there, it works fine. It doesn't degrade. It doesn't seem to get wet and and dirty and filthy. It, um, I can get to it easy. So it's an important tool. And uh, this is actually a, a reasonably cheap front bag. I should replace it at some point. But it kind of sits here okay. There's a bit of a makeshift jerry can. Uh, keep a bit of lip balm in there. If you're from overseas, you're going to want to use lip balm in New Zealand. Uh, I've seen a lot of tourists with some pretty terrible looking lips after uh, seven days on the roads here with our high UV. Uh, my main chain lubes here that I'll be using every day and a little rag. This is a bit of an addition to my kit, the amount of times I forget to have a piece of rag to clean the chain with. Uh, and sunblock, another must have for the New Zealand conditions. Um, I buy the baby sunblock for no other reason than the containers are quite small and it's generally well priced and that's UV50. Uh, so that's easily available. On the tank bag, this is kind of where I keep all of the battery stuff. Oops. Everything electronic. Um, some of the stuff you do need to get to in the dark and such so I keep it here, it's handy. Or if you're at a cafe, you want to charge your cell phone or something for half an hour, an hour while you're eating, you can pull your bits and bobs out of here. So obviously charger. Um, if I've pulled up for the night and I need to get camping happening, and here I've got a, just a little head torch. So I've got my wee head torch in that wee bag. Um, it's actually a really bright one, so it gives me a backup if my main uh, headlamp fails. I could ride with this, it'll give me enough output. Um, and it means I'm not wasting my battery if I'm just fluffing around in the tent or cooking tea, I'm not wasting my main battery. Uh, my spot tracker lives in here, so I get reasonably good reception. You probably could find a better spot because you do hunch over them a little bit and that can interfere with the signal. But most of my pings go out okay with it sitting in this location. Uh, and it's not hard for me every now and then, I can open the zip and just make sure that it is, that I have turned it on and that it is tracking. So that lives up the front. Uh, my main helmet light, now typically I'll actually have this on the helmet from day one. So all I need to do when it does get dark is actually fish around in here uh, and pull the battery out and st throw that little sucker in my back pocket. Uh, this is a little Azure Thumb light that I found. It was not expensive, something like 1500 lumens. Um, and I can ride pretty damn fast with this just on low. I can climb happily. Uh, unless it's super technical, I don't need to put it on bright. And I think I get on lower, I get something like 30 hours between charges. So that's that, that's brilliant. If I have to go to full bright, I'm only a couple of few at maybe three hours tops. Um, but it's very seldom. It would only be a technical descent. I'd need it on bright. Uh, now, a lot of people run dynamo hubs and things. I've chosen not to. Um, mostly expense, but also complications, uh, bearing trouble and... Uh, having to dismantle wheels to get bearings replaced and things like that, uh, I'll try to avoid it. Uh, so I'll show you how I do my charging. This is the, all the cables I need for all my devices. Uh, 
I've taken together so they're easily lost on the trail when you unzip your bag so they're all USB charging devices and varying outlets on the other end and I'm charging from this so this is a big sucker 1600 16,000 milliamp battery it's heavy um, but when you that's oh, not too bad but when you start comparing it to hubs and all the other bits and pieces you're going to need this is really not that bad of an option I could charge an iPhone 6 maybe seven times or something off a battery like this but I can also charge my battery for my Azure Lite um, I could potentially run my spot tracker off it I could run the Garmin off it if I needed to I obviously charge a cell phone um, the e-trex will take regular batteries which is great I have chosen to start at least with two sets of rechargeables and this doofy little Vata uh, charger this also works as a USB power supply so it's got an input output option uh, this is cheap it's a very slow charging device though uh, it's going to might take a day or two to charge a set of batteries it's a bit ridiculous um, but it folds up nice and small and uh, it gives me another option saving me having to buy batteries every stop though I typically carry three bottles so I've got one up the front I've got the two in the frame uh, I keep this little feed bag spare occasionally I'm going to buy a chocolate milk or a, a pump bottle or, or some disposable bottle along the way so if we've got a long haul between stops I know I've got extra room for it um, got my headlight sorted on the back I've got just a, a small little uh, tail light that is enough for the amount of Tarsiel roads that we do ride in the back is cooker, a bit of a luxury, uh, this is Primus's version of a jet ball um, does, does a good job, the thing I liked about it is that you can get much lighter cookers but then you still need a billy and you need a cup and you need other things like that if you are going to choose to carry one, you definitely don't need to for the TA there's plenty of food along the way if you plan your days right, you can get away without it. Um, it's also another option for uh, sanitising water if you need to. I'm carrying the cooker, so I carry a couple of freeze-dried meals. For most rides I do, these come home with me, and I don't use them at all. It's always my fallback position. If I'm having a bad day, I can stop and have a feed. Uh, I did use these on the TA. With three of us riding one night, we got into a small town, nothing was open. And we had the option of stopping there for the night or carrying on. So we shared two meals between three of us, which was plenty, and uh, we managed to carry on for another two or three hours. So, um, and, and the other thing I'd like is to make a cup of coffee on a, especially on a bad day. The other stuff I keep in my back uh, bag here is my wet gear or cold gear. So I've got a set of uh, fleece gloves. I've got a little merino cap that happily goes under my helmet. Gets a lot of wear. Got my full jacket, um, it's a really nice uh, ground effect jacket, it's quite light, it's got good underarm zips, it's got a hood inside the collar and it's amazingly waterproof. I've been really surprised the conditions I've worn that jacket in and it's looked after me really well. Um, just a, 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 a merino jersey and that jacket um, and I've, I've been in icy below zero conditions pushing my bike and it's been sort of a good combination because you put too much gear on you sweat too much too little you freeze pogies not many people have these this is a New Zealand take on pogies and it's perfect for our conditions so it's triple layer Gore-Tex uh, Wendy in Christchurch has made these for a few lucky people uh, you slip it over your bar ends over your shifters and, and slip your hand in there as long as you can keep the wind off your hands, you're going to be warm. You don't need a big, super thick pair of gloves. I spent a uh, hundred and eight dollars on a fancy pair of gloves. Found that after an hour wearing them, they were sweaty on the inside, and they were cold and awful. And you will never ever get them dry. <laughs> They'll stay that way forever. Uh, whereas a set of basic woolly gloves or polar fleece gloves inside those, um, easy to dry. Those gloves. I carry a little microfiber towel, so if I uh, I do stop for a swim and uh, etc. or a wash, I can dry myself up pretty good. Got a dry bag. Often I'll wrap the contents of this um, seat bag inside that sucker, especially if I know it's going to rain, um, and obviously keep things dry. Spare pair of socks and my tent. Um, 
I've tried bivvies and they're typically 500 grams of circa. Uh, I found this uh, Terra Nova Laser Photo 1. It's around about an 800 gram tent. I've upgraded the pegs to something more substantial, so maybe 850 now. But that's a twin skin tent. It's a tunnel tent. It'll stand up to a, a howling wind. Uh, it's really warm, dry. It's got good waterproofing and such. And if you have to, you can sleep two people in it, but it is cozy with two. It really is a, a large one person tent. Best thing about it is you can get dressed in that tent. Whereas the bivvies that I had at least, you had to get out and stand around naked while you got dressed on a freezing wet morning. And lastly, in that back bag, two tubes. Uh, one tube if you're running tubeless, sure. Uh, I, I did generally on the TA only carry one tube. But I found that uh, whilst there's plenty of towns along the way, invariably they weren't open when I rode into that town. It was after hours or too early. So you could potentially lose half a day waiting for a bike shop to open to find your 29 inch replacement tube. So two is a good, good solver. On the front, food bag. Um, this was a necessary addition to my kit, I found because I just never had enough room once I'd stopped at a supermarket or something, I, I couldn't fit what I purchased on the back on the bike. So usually I'd have a, some lollies, some cashew nuts, uh, maybe some cheese snacks, some beer sticks, uh, that sort of thing in here, lots of muesli bars. Uh, right now I've got a little bit of Pure, which is a really good New Zealand made, Christchurch made I think, uh, electrolyte. Also has some uh, carbohydrate in it, so for long distance riding, it's going to go well. I find this is my best success for avoiding cramp is to hammer the electrolytes on the first couple of days. Um, just try and drink the electrolyte all the time. I've also found that I, I avoid gastro problems by uh, eating more, drinking more electrolytes. Uh, whether that's coincidence, not sure. Coffee bags. This is a, a cheap way to have, or easy way I should say, to have real coffee. On these rides, it's like a tea bag, but just full of coffee. Um, I have got a plunger for the uh, little jet boil style unit, uh, but it's a hassle. I find the coffee bags work well. Uh, and lastly, in this front bag is my fantastic Smiths. Um, a hard case. It's a bit of an extravagance, but you can pretty much guarantee if you don't take something like that for your sunnies, they're going to be buggered by the time you finish your ride. A thousand miles or a few thousand k's. Uh, on shingle is going to scratch the heck out of anything you're wearing on your face so it's worth putting up with having a case yeah, last bag on the bike here what do we get up in the front bag this seems to be my sleeping stuff for night time so i've got a set of polyprops or a bit of a mixture of polyprop and merino so that's my sleeping kit for a cold night and also my backup kit for disastrous days where you're in freezing cold conditions um, First aid kit, try to keep that handy. That sucker is well loaded with additions over the years. A sleeping bag liner, you're almost filthy every night uh, when you get into your sleeping bag. So uh, that also adds a bit of warmth, keeps things clean, it's easy to wash. Uh, right, and here we have other things for sleeping. Bedroll. So we've got a Thermarest uh, X-Lite bedroll. I think it's probably one of the more preferred full size so or full size uh, mummy shaped Thermarests or bed mats. And um, I, I find it's it's warm enough. It's only 280 odd grams or something like that. So it's definitely substantially lighter than my older ones. And um, and I like the way the ribs run across your body. It sort of conforms to your back a little bit. Uh, Another emergency item is a little ultralight down jacket. Uh, even in the middle of summer places I've been cold and it's freaking awful if you're 100k from Salvation and you are proper cold and hungry and everything's going wrong. Having one piece of really warm kit like that can really change your day. So that's a 210 gram extravagance but it's uh, well worth it. I pretty much carry it everywhere now. And once again, you can sleep in that if you get a particularly cold night. Uh, sleeping bag. So this is also X-Lite, different manufacturer. This is a Cumulus X-Lite. Um, one of the best value for money bags out of Poland that I could possibly find. It's uh, got a comfort rating of around zero and it weighs 410 grams. You can save about 50 grams by getting one without a zip. 
but uh, then what are you doing on a hot night? So I've kept the zip uh, and I rate that bag brilliantly. I have slept below zero in that with my liner and uh, I had my polyprop on as my base layer or the only thing I was wearing and I was too hot. I was, um, I was sweating. So that's a better scenario than the alternative. That's the rest of my Long John sleeping kit that's in that front bag. And lastly, I keep my poles and my tent poles from the Terra Nova. I keep those in the front because it makes the bottom of the bag quite rigid. And if you do pull this up with a strap to keep it off your wheel, um, those poles help stiffen the whole assembly up. So that's my location for those. So that's everything on the bike. Um, one little other sneaky tip I've got is I do hide down here in my 1x11 on the inside. I'm hiding a little 28 tooth chainery. At the end of a really bad day, uh, you find yourself with a, a big, big climb and the legs are blown apart. Uh, and I can pretty simply uh, drop the chain with my foot whilst pedaling. And uh, it just gives me that, that extra gear for the sake of a few extra grams. It doesn't get used heaps. Uh, a little annoying at times having to stop and lift the chain back on to the main chain ring, but um, it's just a fallback position. I don't have a derailleur, I don't have a a front shifter. So that's the bike setup. The only other things is what I was, what I wear on. Uh, I love city shoes. I've had a very few pairs of these my entire life. They just go and go and go. Uh, I chose to go for a pair with no venting because I'm forever getting cold feet, and most of the time that was being the right decision. Uh, Thirty plus degree days. Occasionally I, I doubt it, but uh, I always wear a sweatband. Um, keep keep my eyes clear. This is probably two best things I ever uh, started wearing when on breveting, which is just a simple set of arm warmers and a vest. Uh, really easy to adjust your temperature as you're riding. You don't have to stop. If you are lucky enough to find some good people to ride with on your adventures, um, you can easily roll your sleeves down to your, uh, to your wrists or, or unzip your jacket and it's like you're not wearing anything. It's got a bit of mesh back on it. Um, but even on a pretty cold day, that is enough to keep me rolling unless it's raining and awful as long as I've got my heart rate up that'll keep me warm in a pretty terrible conditions. Jersey on the TA I actually wore some some lycra thing I uh, wish I hadn't this is what I wear now um, it's a ground effect um, sort of merino blend style top if you're gonna wear one jersey for uh, a couple of weeks make it a merino one your friends will appreciate it um, doesn't stink because it's a blend it doesn't stretch and get all saggy and baggy like a lot of stuff it's a very long jersey it does come down come down sort of past your bum uh, but on the bright side it's got nice big pockets and um, well, we, we have these uh, screen printed for, for a work thing but I really rate that as a good jersey to wear all day long bibs um, I get uncomfortable in the saddle so I, I splashed out on a pair of these ASOS uh, Family bibs, which are supposed to be the best long distance riding short on the market. But they retail for something ludicrous like 470 New Zealand dollars or something excessive and very hard to find on sale. Uh, do rate them really highly. There's hardly any stitching holding the chamois in, it's just stitched in the corners. Um, just where they've put the seams, the shape, the cut. There's a hilarious little pocket for your package in the front uh, that'll impress everybody. And uh, they are really comfortable. First time I wore them I had some issues in a really wet, cold, awful day. Uh, and then ever since they've been fantastic. So uh, ASOS shorts, do a bit of research. Um, there's not that many renowned long distance shorts. And I generally on the TA wore a pair of baggies just to make the point that I'm a mountain biker. <laughs> and also... Uh, means you have got something other than lycra to wear if you do end up uh, stopping somewhere for a night uh, or if you want to go for a swim etc so just a pair of fox over shorts um, towards the end of the TA I, I did find wearing shorts over top was it was a touch annoying I just wanted my pants to be as dry and cool as possible at all times so these occasionally got got ditched and then that's about it one last thing I always carry is a bit of sweet cheeks Go through a bit of that on over uh, 3,000 Ks. So that's the kit. Uh, everyone's got a different take on, on how to set a bike up for a, for a TA or for any big brevet. Um, 
there's not a lot I would change. I thought the tyres were the, the Maxxis Crossmark were, were a good tyre with the combination of shingle road. You know, there's a bit of asphalt in there. Um, that I've never ever had any trouble with traction. I think they're, they're they've got plenty of side knob on them. I'm a reasonably technical rider, and uh, but I've never come unstuck or, or had any really big dramas with them. So hopefully it's uh, given you some ideas or uh, jogged your thoughts and memories of things you need to pack for your next adventure. Uh, there's a few extravagance on there. I could probably could probably chop a, a kg in a bit um, out of that and, and still have a pretty comfortable ride. But uh, I like the option that if all else fails, if I blow up, if the weather's terrible, I've got a real tent that I can actually sit in. I've got an actual cooker and food that I can um, happily stop and know that I'm... Uh, going to have a full tummy and can sleep well. I can also sterilize my water. Um, my first aid kit I have covered all the bases. A lot of people I was surprised didn't carry much in the way of first aid. They're sort of reliant figuring other people around them will have stuff. Um, I don't go that way. I'd rather be the person who does have it and can help the others out. Um, I've added a lot to this. I'm not certain about the whistle. I guess if you're proper lost and um, in an emergency situation it might be helpful. That was actually added for an adventure race. Of sorts, um, occasionally on a bad day, I might use a puffer. Um, my knees tend to play up after enough K's, so a little bit of deep heat's a bit of a treat. And uh, ballistics, which the international riders will invariably need at the end of their ride. Um, you are eating some crazy food and amounts of it, and it's occasionally a bit of indigestion occurs for myself. And it can be really frustrating if you are hours and hours away from the town. Um, and you've, you've got that feeling in your throat, so cookies is a nice one. You never know who you're going to be sleeping with on these trips. Invariably, you're going to end up sharing a hotel or a motel or a, a shed with somebody that snores. Um, and that can be really frustrating when you're super tired and fixated on listening to someone snoring. So earplugs, probably getting a little excessive there. And uh, also in there, I've got a little bit of codeine, just a, a strong painkiller. Uh, if you have got a, a reasonably major injury or... Um, you're nursing something, having a strong painkiller just in case could be the difference between pulling out of the event or managing for half a day and then completing. Now, ibuprofen, um, it's got an anti-inflammatory in it and someone gave me the tip that uh, you're trying to sleep on a bed roll, especially the first few nights, a couple of these before bed, your body's pretty blood, bruised and, and hurting anyway so it's going to help, it's going to help you sleep, reduce that inflammation. And then obviously the typical first aid uh, things, bandages, plasters, uh, I've got a sling in here for the inevitable, inevitable uh, broken clavicle, um, you know, tweezers. Uh, I've added some, um, some needles in here, uh, that was for blisters. But it run a bit of cotton through a blister and let it drain out overnight, um, once again you can really improve your, ne your next day. And then there's obviously wipes and, and bits and pieces like that in there. So uh, hopefully that's, uh, that's helped you.